Hi everyone, I'm here with Beth Anderson. She's a Durham University student that's worked with Syrian refugees in Thessaloniki and she studies sociology and French, I believe, second year, right? Yeah, yep. that's right. Welcome, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Beth, how did you find out about working with Syrian refugees? Um, well, it was very basically when Durham for Refugees, the student group, first came about, uh, which was about this time last year, when a third year Lana did a talk about her experiences volunteering in Dunkirk and in Calais. Um, she did a talk about that and did afterwards... Did Lana work with refugees as well? Yes, yep. so she was volunteering in the camps in Dunkirk and helping out with humanitarian mm -hmm. aid and that kind of thing. Uh, and she did this talk and said about all the horrific conditions that these people have been through so much and now they're stuck in these camps. Um, and at the time she was on her like working year, her gap year. Um, so she said, why don't you set up a group and facilitate these kinds of trips as well as other things, campaigning and that kind of thing. Uh, so afterwards a group of us got together um, and set up Durham for Refugees. Um, and first of all, we went to Calais in the summer. Mm -hmm. And so this was our second lot of trips. How many were you in the group? How many? Um, so in Durham for Refugees, we have a hell of a lot of interest. There's 800 <laughs> That's always good <laughs> likes. to hear. <laughs> yeah, like lots of likes on Facebook and lots of people keen to get involved. Uh, and then we've got a small group of us, about mm -hmm. 10 of us on the exec, trying to direct these efforts. Um, and with regard to the trips, we've had about probably about 20 students go out over summer and then it was six students mm -hmm. at Christmas going to Thessaloniki. And you're linked with I guess the camps in Thessaloniki for example and you're sending people out there on a trip? Yeah that's right so there's an organisation Help Refugees mm -hmm. which we work with in Thessaloniki and then it was Kerfa Calais in France. Brilliant. Um, what inspired you to do this, go out to Thessaloniki? What was your big inspiration? Um, ever since the refugee crisis has been on the news and you've seen these people in boats mm -hmm. coming across, I thought, why is nobody doing anything? But it really was Lana's talk that made me think, well, she's doing this, why can't we do it and why can't we get it out to more mm -hmm. people? Um, it just makes no sense to me that we're letting right. people um, Can like you describe it. a typical day for you whilst you were working in Thessaloniki? What tended to happen? So most of the time we were in the warehouse um, when we were in Thessaloniki and it was a case of going in and seeing what was needed that day because it's a changing environment mm -hmm. and it really was different one day to the next. Um, but typically we'd maybe sort clothes and donations in the morning because they all come in in mixed, mm -hmm. mixed bags. And These donations from different European countries, so for example France, Germany, England. United Kingdom as well. Yeah, um, while we were there we had van loads from Spain, van loads from the UK, that, um, mm -hmm. everywhere really. Um, and just, just sorting them out into what's good donation, what's good quality clothes. You don't want to give somebody a dirty like, sweatshirt with mm -hmm. holes in it or whatever. So we were sorting that out and getting it ready to be distributed in the camps. Um, and then some people, it was more long term volunteers that would go out into the camps because you don't want to be one, there one day and then not the next day. It's not really fair on the people who you're helping yeah. to that uncertainty and that instability. Um, but one day we did work in the kitchens and we were preparing a lot of food. <laughs> um, and then some of us went out to the squats and gave it to the people, um, which was good. And yeah, while we were there, it was absolutely freezing mm -hmm. and we ended up, the, all the pipes had frozen. So we we couldn't cook with like obviously need a lot of water to cook and to clean with and we had to melt snow and then boil up snow to, to cook with and to clean with so a typical day that week was going out in the morning collecting snow and boiling it up and then trying to defrost the tomatoes you were cooking with but Goodness, I hope it's not like that all the time. So um, we've all heard so much about Syrian refugees but you've actually met them for the first time. What are they like I suppose is the big question. They're all different, they're, all, they're just like people. Um, they're just like us. Just like us, exactly. Um, it just happens very, very unfortunately that they've had to go through mm -hmm. all these things and they've had to leave the country. Um, but, I mean, we met people that were students like us and have had to stop in the middle of their law degree or their mm -hmm. medicine degree and um, are just really nice people. You can have a joke with them mm -hmm. and despite all they've been through, they're resilient and have to have a laugh. Mm -hmm. um, so these are educated people just yeah. like us that have uh, 
um, ended up in the refugee camps. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Could you tell us any stories that they told you of their experiences getting to the refugee camp? Um, they all had their own story that w was different, but included the same. At one one stage, something they saw or. A, a family member had been killed or, or something which had made them think I can't stay here anymore yeah. um, because they all want to be in their own country or most of them do the ones I've spoke to do and they have every intention of going back and trying to rebuild the country afterwards um, so they all have this story of the moment that they decided to leave and they've been through different different countries and different camps on the on the journey but very horrific conditions and a lot of them have stories about how the police have treated them particularly when we went to France one guy was saying um, he didn't speak much French he spoke very good English um, but he didn't speak much French and the, the police were telling them to move along but he didn't understand so the police would just beat him up and mm -hmm. try to get them their message across that way which isn't what you think French police are doing but apparently it is <laughs> yes goodness me wow um, was everyone in the refugee camp Syrian um, or do we have a mix of different cultures, nationalities coming there? Um, a, a mix. Um, in Calais, there was there were Eritrean people, mm -hmm. Afghan, um, and a lot of Sudanese people, um, and, and Syrians as well. People from Iraq. Anywhere where there's some problem or even political refugees. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a mix. You hear a lot about the Syrians, but from a lot of different different countries. Yeah. And they, like in Calais particularly, I think there was a lot of criticism about them living in separate sections in the camp. So you'd get all these Syrian people together and all the Sudanese together. But it, it really wasn't like that when we were there. We were playing football all together, and it was who was on your football team. You didn't care where they were from. It was it, like it was a really nice spirit despite the horrific conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, are they all planning? Where are they planning to go next? Um, it varies. In Thessaloniki, the if you're in a camp, it tends to be that you'll recognise you're ready to claim asylum in Greece, mm -hmm. and so you'd be registered. The people that were squatting had intentions of coming to the UK. Um, they had family there, or they spoke English and thought that was the best chance of making a life in a country okay. where they, they could speak the language. Um, but yeah, it, it, it varied really. And a lot a lot of people do have hopes to come to the UK, um, but certainly not everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so do they still want to carry on with their jobs, their careers, their degrees as well, as soon as they settle down? Absolutely. I think that's one of the questions we get asked most was, mm -hmm. how, can you help me work and I study, particularly um, in Calais, because I didn't spend that much time with the refugees themselves in Greece, unfortunately. Um, but we were asked, like, I want, I want to register at university, and it was really difficult to kind of say, well, I, I don't know how, I don't know how we can do that. Um, but the lives are completely put on hold. They've had all this future and the prospects. They've been studying, and the next day they're, they're in these camps with no hope of, or no prospect of an end, um, which is really sad. What do they think of the response of European countries to what's happened to them? It's difficult to say really uh, and it wasn't really a question I directly asked anybody. Um, they all have very high views of the UK <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> You'd say it, they'd say where are you from and you'd say England and oh England, I love England. Um, but I think there certainly is a sense of why is nobody doing anything to help me and mm -hmm. Who will help? Who will help this situation? We we thought we'd come to Europe thinking that this was a place of sanctuary that we could rebuild our lives, and it's a refugee camp mm -hmm. with nobody to help, nobody to offer advice on like practical and legal things, and just disappointing in that. <laughs> Very mm -hmm. disappointing in that sense. So would you say they're disappointed with the response from Europe overall? I'd say they're disappointed and. Yeah, d definitely disappointed, but for some some reason or they still have this hope and it's it's hard to know whether to crush that and mm -hmm. say, well, the UK, unfortunately, isn't as good, um, but it should be better. So, yeah, okay. I think they're disappointed. And um, what can we do 
that's Durham University students to help them, what can we do now? There are a lot of different things that we are doing as part of Durham for Refugees and I'd encourage people to like our Facebook page because mm -hmm. we will post all our ways of helping on there. Um, I think campaigning is a really good way of trying to find a longer term solution. Yeah. Um, so we, any petitions that are calling for like the Dubs Amendment to be re reinstated and uh, refugee rights, family reunification, like the detention centres are awful. There are lots of more specific campaigns that it's important to get behind and like lobby the government in a way that they can actually act. Um, we'll, we'll also be looking at doing some more trips out over the summer, so keep an eye out for those. Or you can, it's very, very easy to volunteer. You literally look at Care for Calais website, look at Help Refugees website and go over that and help. They desperately need volunteers. Um, they've got a lot of donations and they need the volunteers. Okay. Um, fundraising events as well, we're doing a lot of, so right. fundraising. Brilliant, thank you very much for your time, Beth. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you, very interesting, thank you.